How's it going guys? This is my new bike. This is a new bike day video, finally for me. Let's get straight into it. Okay guys, well this is my first talking head video in a long while and um, I want to say welcome back to my subscribers that have stuck around while I had a quiet year last year and I want to say welcome to any um, new viewers that this bike or this video might bring. If you would consider subscribing to the channel, there's plenty of mountain biking contact to come, content to come up this year. I'm going to have a busy year this year on YouTube so it's going to be a good time to subscribe. Um, let's have a talk about my Bomb Track Beyond Plus One. So if we go if we go through the bike one thing at a time, we'll start with the frame. So it's a Bomb Track Beyond Plus One extra large frame that I've gone for. It's a steel frame. It's 4130 double butted. I think they call it Chromo or CRMO um, frame. So it's 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 actually not too heavy. It's surprising how not heavy it is. But um, a steel frame is much more forgiving and much more suited to bike packing. Obviously, if you look at the geometry and the setup of this bike, and if you know anything about bike packing as well, this is obviously a proper bike packing rig so it's it's um it comes with a lot of mounts and everything for all your for all your panniers and packs and stuff like that but it's also the mountain biking you know orientated bike packing so this kind of bike is designed for you know fire tracks so if you break up like a bike packing trip you'd expect to try and aim for no more than 10 percent of the ride being on on road maybe 50 percent of the ride being on gravel track and then as much of the ride as possible being on single track so that's what this bike um was designed for as you can see the steel frame like i say is covered in in you know all kinds of mounts for different types of of bike packing bags so the forks have got um, a triple mount system for your kind of pannier racks for the front so i've got a set of salsa frames and packs coming for the forks there's loads of bosses for moving water bottles around underneath the cranks underneath the bottom bracket there just in front of the bottom bracket all down the front of the triangle down the back of the triangle so it's covered in all the mounts right back to if you look at the top of the back triangle there's even mounts there for a proper frame set up for panniers so it's the frame is fully kitted out ready for bike packing and it's, it's a really good frame actually um, if we look a little bit at the componentry now the handlebars that come with this and the stem are both by bomb track the bike comes with a relatively flat bar made by bomb track i think it's like 730 millimeters wide and a bomb track stem it comes with SRAM level brakes, so they're just double pop brakes, um, nothing really special about it. They're per they, they, they seem really um, responsive for this bike. I've not had great experience with SRAM brakes on my old bike, but so far so good on this one. I'm really happy with the brakes on this. One of the massive selling points for me with this bike was that it, it comes with SRAM NX Eagle. So it comes with the basic SRAM Eagle system, the NX shifter and derailleur, um, obviously the chain ring. I guess it's just the same as the SRAM GX cassette, but I'm not sure about that. Um, this is the more budget out of the SRAM NX system again, in that it comes with a set of Truvativs. If I, I don't know how you say that, Truvative, Truvative, I don't know, but it comes with Truvative cranks instead of the SRAM GX or NX cranks. So that's what makes it, That's I guess that's part, you know, those kind of decisions that they make that makes it so as you can get SRAM GX on this bike. And then again, saddle and seat post, both by Bomb Track as well. They seem to make a lot of their own componentry, which is good. This particular bike came with a set of WTB tires. I don't really know too much about the tires. My plan is to change the tires. But to be honest, I'll see how I get on with the current setup. It comes with a set of WTB ST rims. Um, they're real wide. So this is a fat, you know, this is not fat bike, but this is a plus size tire bike. At the moment, the, the WTB tires that are on there now are 2.8 um, with the 27.5. So this is another point to come on to, but with the 27.5 inch wheels, you can go up to a three inch tire, which is really good. Um, on that point, this bike can take both 
a 29 inch wheel i think that goes up to then was it two and a quarter inch 2.25 inches on the on the fatness of the tire or you can go down to like i said you can go down to 27.5 inch and go for a three inch tire so you could have two sets of wheels for a bike like this you could have the 29 you, you know the 29 inch wheels with narrower tires for longer distances perhaps where you spend more times on road more times on gravel track and then when you go in for more mountainous type terrain where you're going to be doing a bit more hardcore riding then you might want to go for the smaller rims and get the fatter tires on there up to you same again for like if you've got a, a trip that you're going to do on a lot of sand or snow that would be a good time to put the 27.5s on on a wide tire so that's another really good feature i'll probably stick with the 27.5 inch wheels that are on there now but um it's a great feature for the bike i reckon so we'll come on to a few of the things that i really like and, and a couple of things that i'm not so keen on so the stuff that i like so far is the shram eagle so this bike is a 1900 euro bike um i don't know i did a lot of research and I can't remember now actually off the top of my head where bomb track come from. I managed to get them from a supplier up in France, but I don't know if they're European or, or American. You can look at the website, which I'll link up in the description below. Um, but the reason I went for bomb track is they're a slightly newer, I believe, and a slightly smaller company than companies like Surly and Salsa. And what that means, um, which is great, is that you get a really good frame, you get a really you know, decent set of components on it, including the SRAM Eagle. Now, th at this price point, which is 1,900 euros again, at this price point, there's not many bikepacking rigs out there that come with SRAM Eagle in any form, that come with big cassettes on the back in any form. And even when you go and start looking at um, alloy hardtails that you might be able to you know strap stuff to the frame and use it for bike packing again you're still looking at sort of 12 13 1400 quid i think to get into i was looking at like norco bikes and stuff like that you're still looking at you know a relatively high price point to get shram eagle on the bike so this was kind of it's not i don't, I don't look at it as like an entry level bike but it's definitely got like an entry level price in terms of the fact that you get shram eagle for 1900 quid on a on a a purpose-built bike packing rig with all of the bosses all the mounts the proper steel frame fully you know the fully rigid setup of it it's it's a really good really good value and it includes that shram eagle so that was one of the things i really liked about the bike and, and one of the big reasons that i went for this bike another thing which i touched on just then is i just love the frame I lo it's my first kind of time delving into the bike packing um, world it's always been on my list for for many years now and i'm just really thrilled at the way that the bike rides it's my first time on a set of fat tires so i've you know learned that you take a lot of the pressure out and give yourself a much smoother ride but the frame on this bike i really really love it um all of the options for mounting that it's got the real burliness you know the feel of it there's something just feels so different about a steel frame to like an alloy frame it feels I don't know what the way it almost feels softer more pliable than like an alloy frame an alloy frame kind of feels like it might be more likely to shatter i don't know how to explain it but there's something about a steel bike that just feels a lot you know smoother that's what must be why they use it for this kind of kind of riding it's it's hard to explain that one i'll leave that one there i really like the brakes um they've uh, straight out of the box the brakes have been perfect i haven't had to do any kind of bleeding as you would expect for you know a bike that's brand new and out of the box the tires seem okay so far i need to change them to tubeless and see how they how they act then but i may stick with these tires until they're worn out we'll see the rims seem really nice and solid i'm quite happy with all that you know all of those things i'm really happy about with the bike however there have been a few things about this bike that i found a little bit disappointing the first of which is when i was building the bike the rear brake caliper came really well wrapped the whole bike was incredibly well wrapped actually but the, uh, the rear caliper came taped to the bike i think on my previous new bikes they've come installed and everything on this one it was taped to the side so obviously i had to i had to fasten it to the bike no problem but while doing so i noticed that um i've got kind of an engineering background and and to get the screws in it felt like i was it felt like i cross threaded both screws when i hadn't so i was having to do like a quarter of a turn after i'd got in a few turns for the whole thread of the screw on the rear caliper i was having to do like a quarter of a turn in to, you know quarter of a turn back out make it up and then and then a quarter of a turn again quarter of a turn so it's almost as if i was tapping the thread as i was going which I, which i can't that can't have been the case but 
it really was shining the screw up as I was going. It wasn't damaging the screw, but the screw was black, you know, treated black in, in like hot oil or whatever they do. And it was polishing the thread up. So there was definitely a lot of, you know, scoring going on in there. It was a very tight tolerance between the, the male and the, the male thread of the, of the screw and the female thread in the frame. And that was just a horrible feeling on a brand new bike, kind of just having to wind this thread in real gently. It just didn't seem right. So I wasn't 100% thrilled about screwing that rear, the way that that rear caliper screwed in. Um, so that was the first thing that I wasn't too keen on. The second thing was the front hub. So the bearings, you know, where the through axle is, the bearings inside the hub itself. So you have the, the bearing on one side, the bearing on the other side, and then there's a set of spacers throughout that have got a close tolerance to to the through axle itself. So I guess the idea is that the two sets of bearings pull in tight. So you would put one side bearing in, put all your spaces in, bring the other side bearing in, pinch it all in on each other. So as you get like a pressed fit of the spaces on the inside and then a couple of seals either side just to stop, you know, just dust seals really. This came and basically the, fr the front set of spacers one of them kept slipping down so when i was trying to get the through axle in it was it was hitting the face of something so i took it back out again and had a look through and it obviously it just looked like a ring had fallen down which is what it was one of the end spacers had fallen down and i had to use a screwdriver and it was just really awkward to get this to, to hold a screwdriver in from one side and get the through axle in the other side so i was lining it up lining this spacer ring up with the with the screwdriver and then pushing the through axle through um i would imagine now that it's all in there and it's all fastened in tight it probably won't do it again but again it's just another one of those things that's just it doesn't feel nice when you're first putting a bike together so i was a bit disappointed with that 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 front hub issue and then the other thing that i would change that i changed almost instantly is I had a 780 mil wide set of handlebars from my Canyon Strive. I, I put a set of um, rental carbon fat bars on my on my Strive, so I had these alloy bars, you know, spare. And the bars that came on this were very flat, and they were. I'm pretty. I measured them, and I can't remember now, but I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll bring it up on the website here now. But I'm pretty sure they were 730 mil wide. The bars that came stock on this bike which is way too narrow. I, I'm not a bike packer and it's not just me putting my mountain bike enduro style ride in and trying to apply it to this, but this is still a mountain bike. This is designed for mountain bike packing. It's designed to be loaded up with equipment and still ride single track. So you still need that width in the bars to be able to maneuver the bike, especially when, like I say, you're carrying 10, 15 kilos, whatever it is you want to carry on the bike. You still need that width in the bars to give you a lot of control over the bike. So I don't really understand why it came with such a narrow set of bars. That just didn't really make sense to me. I've put the new wider bars on it. I went for a ride yesterday and the bike just feels like a new beast again. So much wider, so much more control, much more comfort in going fast, you know, on the, on the fire track, downhill on the fire track. Everything just feels right, like, you know, so. So yeah, they're the, they're the few things that I wasn't 100% keen on. Everything else has been fine. Um, and my first impressions of the bike, I know that I've had those few little things that you wouldn't expect from a brand new bike. Uh, the other thing actually is the, the gears. I've, I've had four new mountain bikes, four or five new mountain bikes now, and probably two or three of them have come in boxes from a supplier. And this is about the worst a bike has ever come in terms of gear setup. The, the gears are set up shite like you know i'm i'm pretty sure what's happened is they've set the gears up not nip the back bolt the the bolt that holds the wire the cable the gear cable in place pretty sure that's not been nipped up and it's slipping while i'm riding so i need to rectify that not a problem i'll set that up properly but just another one of those things that you want your bike to come really well set up so i was a little bit disappointed that that didn't happen so but overall, the bike has been really, really good. I really like it. I really like the ride and I will keep you posted. I will do a more long-term review. And this is really the very start of the bike packing adventures on this channel. So I've started to slowly amass some equipment for going bike packing, but 
with budgeting and stuff like that, it's probably going to take me three or four months to get to a place where I've got enough equipment to go on a couple of day trip, which ties in quite well with getting my fitness back on the bike. So yeah, this is kind of the start of the bike packing journey, guys. You'll see, I'll give you regular updates on the equipment that I buy and show you the setup that I've got. And then I'll give you another update on how the bike is performing. But yeah, that's it. That's my new bike day. I'm so stoked to finally have a new bike on the channel. I'm not one for buying a new bike every year or two. My Canyons drive in terms of my enduro riding and trail riding is still doing everything I need it to. Um, I'm not gonna replace that bike for the foreseeable future, I don't think. Um, so it's nice to bolt on a bike to my, you know, to add a bike to my collection that, that enables me to do something completely different in bikepacking. So I look forward to sharing those adventures with you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you next time.